there may be a lot of similarities between cameras, but camera makers do differentiate themselves in menus and button layouts. Now, people being people, we're going to be drawn to different things, but there's one button in particular that I have very little use for, no matter what camera system I was using at the time during my career. And I've used Minolta, Nikon, Canon, Fujifilm, and a couple of others. And that's the auto exposure lock button. But there is a menu setting that alters the behavior of that button that might be changing that for me. Among the main things that Fujifilm users love about these cameras are the tactile controls to adjust to exposure from your shutter speed, your ISO, and of course the aperture rings on the lenses. Occasionally for quick adjustments, I'll use the uh, exposure compensation. But there are times where none of those methods are really quick enough. Say you're shooting a, uh, an event and you've got a very high key situation to a very low key situation. Say you, maybe you've got some, someone wearing something very bright and white and you want to keep that scene very light and airy and then you need to quickly switch over to someone wearing something very dark. Your camera is going to think, uh, well, this is a very dark situation and it's going to try and overexpose that. So there are times where it could be useful to lock and unlock your exposure very quickly. And sure, today's cameras do have a lot of dynamic range and the raw files often have a lot of latitude but I really try to shoot very precisely. And you can get away with some of that in stills. It's a lot less so when you're shooting video. You probably already know, but the default operation of the auto exposure lock is to press and hold the button to hold the exposure. And when you release the button, the camera resumes its automatic exposure adjustment depending on your scene. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with this default setup. It works well for a lot of people. It's just maybe how I'm wired. But it was never so second nature or intuitive that I would use it quickly without thinking, which is easier for me to use one of these other parameters. But there is a way to change that button behavior so that I might find it more useful and you might find it more useful too. So let's take a look at how to do that. I use Fujifilm cameras and it's going to be pretty similar across the Fujifilm range. But I would expect other camera makers to have similar functionality in their auto exposure lock buttons. Open up your menus and you're gonna scroll up to the wrench icon and then down to button dial setting and scroll down until you see AEAF lock mode. It's lock mode that you're looking for. And by default, you'll see AEAF on when pressing. And then down below that, you'll see AE. AF on off switch. Okay, here's the auto exposure lock button. I'm not pressing it yet, but if you look above my thumb here, you'll see when I press it, a little icon pops up, little EL in blue. Depressed again and it disappears. So auto exposure lock is off. Auto exposure lock is back on. And if you move it around, you'll see if it flickers around press the lock back on, doesn't change. This is still new to me and I don't know if it's gonna make me use it more or not, but I figured I'd give it a try. I would be curious to hear your thoughts, whether you use the auto exposure lock button at all, or if you think this might entice you to use it more. If you have any tips, questions, or comments, please leave those down in the comments below. And otherwise, we'll see you in the next one.